Hey, it's Cold Shiner here, and uh, normally I'd say I've never met a beer I didn't like. Uh, my wife bought this the other day, yesterday, and um, now I can say I bought a beer that I don't dislike it, but man, this is like the worst Shiner I've ever had in my life. They decided to stick some kind of uh, grapefruit in it. It's just, it's just wrong, but I opened it, so I'm drinking it. Um, anyway. Okay, so you watch other videos, you understand that I'm working on potentiometers here. I'm learning what I can from uh, this book, which is the Seberg SHP Amplifier Operation and Troubleshooting Guide by Tony Miller. Um, boy, I wish I would have known Tony before he passed on. I'd love to ask him questions and just talk to him. Anyway, one of the things he says in there is that the potentiometers for setting the bias are just pieces of junk. He's more, much more polite than that, but that's what I figured out. They are just trash. They, you can't adjust them correctly. So he says to buy a Surmet pot. And since they don't, and the old ones were 75 ohm uh, potentiometers, the big old round ones. And uh, he said you can't get those, so go ahead and just buy 100. And again, me being a total noob, didn't really understand what the difference is and now I'm figuring it out and I want to share that with other noobs like myself um, these are resistors think about it a resistor resists things and this particular one the potentiometer is a variable resistor so the old one uh, basically went from let me get a pencil here to see the old resistor was supposed to go from 0 to 75 ohms and so he says they don't sell those anymore so get one that's a 0 to 100 and make it a Surmet because they didn't make Surmet back then but it's a better product so went off and said okay so I did research and uh, I found these these are Surmet and they are 100 ohm Surmet trim potentiometers trim pots and uh, boy these are super cool and they're cheap so I went off and just to show you uh, the insides on one of these things I just put it up on my computer screen over here and so this is a picture of one and this is the inside cutaway so what it is is it's got three wires the center one is called a wiper and the outside two um, as you can see here are just hooked in here and this is a center one so as you turn this screw it changes the resistance between uh, the center wiper and the outside so, and it's got a little cog in there. It shows you that's the cog down there that does it. It's pretty cool to actually understand how simple, but yet how nice this is. Okay, so as you turn that screw at the top, it um, adjusts the resistance. Okay, so I went online and think about buying one United States-wise, but uh, found out that, man, they want like two dollars and fifty cents to five dollars for one of these things and these are a uh, let's see it's a Bourne's B-O-U-R-N-S 3296 well these are the knockoff brand from somebody in China that I bought off of eBay so I bought ten of them for four dollars no shipping no tax they got here in nine days so I checked each one of them uh, with my cheap uh, digital multimeter and they all work just fine in fact they work so much better than those pieces of junk that are currently in the SHP amplifier alright so these are Surmet 100 ohm trim potentiometers or they call them trim pots um, I tried to buy it locally at the electronic store they wanted five dollars for one of these went online all the big stores sell them online and they all want about 250 each you need two of them per I've got like five of these units I'm working on so I needed ten and then they all want to charge it either tax if it's within the state or shipping it's like that's ridiculous so I found these I got ten of them for four dollars four dollars even from some place in the middle of nowhere China and they got here in nine days. I mean, literally, they were shipped in some bubble wrap and a little Ziploc bag inside of a little box. And uh, nine days after I paid for them, they were here. So, complain all I want about the Chinese and products, but let's face it, 
you're gonna buy the same thing from American company only you're paying four to five dollars for one plus tax and shipping or you can buy ten of them no tax no shipping go figure all right so this one I've hooked up it's got three legs you only need two legs you can actually cut the other leg off and that's uh, perfectly acceptable the middle leg is the wiper in this case you see this one is at uh, basically one re ohm resistance I'm on the 200 scale here and as I turn this little screw I'm just using my little screwdrivers to do it with you can have multiple turns remember when I tried to turn that potentiometer in the last video how it went it was the lowest it would go is like two or three ohms and then you just turned it a little bit and it went up to 10 then all of a sudden it jumped down to two again even as you're turning it further then it would jump up to 150 180 and whatever it was just crazy all right well I watch if you can watch the screen on this one okay I'm gonna turn this one it's basically at one can even go down but I'm gonna go up so uh, look how much I'm turning this I'm at three I mean the adjustability that you can get on this is just tremendous I'm turning it another full revolution I'm at six so basically you can have total control over this adjustable resistor trim pot to properly adjust your bias so I'm gonna cut the old one out and I'm gonna solder leads onto these I think I'm just gonna actually just epoxy this um, onto the outside of the chassis so I can easily get to it and just maybe use some kind of heat shrink tubing on it so it's you know nice and safe and goes inside that is gonna be sweet all right let's see if I can do this um, so I took this little cement and zeroed it down so that uh, this wiper pointer so basically these two right now it's at one ohm resistance and I don't need the other one so just to keep my life simple I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the one that's not by the little screw because I no longer need that ever again I just need two wires okay so now I need to put two wires onto this and um, some people are really high-tech I'm not a professional uh, Seaberg repair person I get my wire from anywhere like this wire came from a piece of this I just trimmed it down I mean I use wire that I got the leftover from a ceiling fan um, I am low-tech I got a cheap multimeter but and these are my official clamps here some people call them clothespins I like them though they're non-conductive all right, so I'm going to tin this real fast. Okay, so that's nice and tin. I don't know if you should have to tin these or not, but I figure a little bit of flux on there a little bit of solder on there okay now let's see if I can do this without embarrassing myself too much got a little bit of let's see I can do that actually I think I'm going to cut that lead down it's a little too long all right so Got one soldered on there, I stripped another one, tinned it, now I'm going to try and solder that on. Again, it's not my intent to uh, teach you how to be a good solderer. I'm just kind of showing you what I do, just because that's what I'm doing. This is my lunch break, and I'm having fun. My home office, and uh, you know, everybody's got to have a hobby, and this one is my stress relief, i tell you that. All right. I'm sure people w solder a lot better than me, but what I've got here now is uh, two leads soldered on. I'm just going to find some heat shrink tubing, stick it on there so they can't touch, and uh, shrink it down a bit. 
and uh, go from there. All right, so there you have it. Uh, finished product. Uh, some cheap heat shrink on there. Wrong size, but it worked. And so now I got two leads coming off of it. And right now it is set to one ohm resistance. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that on and hook it up. And good to go.